uncluttered, and unfiltered is supported by Hearts for Minds. Can you imagine waiting 10 years to get screened for cancer? On average, people with mental health issues experience a 10-year delay between symptoms and seeking help. And close to two-thirds of mental illnesses go untreated. Hearts for Minds promotes healthy lives by promoting mental health education, facilitating early identification, and connecting people to treatment. Are you ready to learn more? Go to heartsforminds.org. That's hearts, the number four, minds.org for more information or to learn how you can help. Welcome to Uncluttered and Unfiltered, the podcast urging you to let it go and don't look back with nationally acclaimed professional organizer, Christine Stone, and self-proclaimed hot damn mess radio and TV personality, Eden Kindle. Welcome everybody to Uncluttered and Unfiltered with Eden and Christine. And our episode today is kind of going to be all over the place. We're just going to have a nice little chit chat about this, that, and the other. And the Golden Bachelor chatter will happen towards the end because we have a lot to talk about as, uh, as the, the women told all this past week. Yeah. But let's start out with some breaking news. Since our last get together to record, we found out that the people's sexiest man alive for 2023 was, drumroll please, Patrick Dempsey, also known as Dr. McDreamy, uh, not to be confused with Dr. McSteamy yes. from Grey's Anatomy. People know him from Enchanted. People know him from way back of the, like the 80s yeah. movies. He's been around for a long time. Right. Or 90s movies, I guess. Can't Buy Me Love. Mm-hmm. I don't know what year that was. But anyway, we asked you guys on our Ladies Only Uncluttered and Unfiltered Facebook group if you agreed. I was expecting other other options. People right. saying, well, okay, but I'd rather see so-and-so. But I'm going to say we were at 90% wow. of everyone agreeing Patrick Dempsey was a good one. I think he's a great one. And I follow his wife on Instagram just because she's a makeup artist. And I like watching her techniques. And he is always on there. And she's always doing his hair because she has this putty gel stuff for men's hair. And she's always running her her fingers through his hair. hair. And, you know, doing like this makeup stick she uses just like, I, I mean- the two of them are adorable, but What's her he, name. I want to follow um, her. Jillian Dempsey. Okay. I want to follow her with a J and she has her own makeup line. She's a makeup artist to the stars, but anyway, so the two of them are adorable. And when he was chosen, I thought, Oh my God, what a, what a great choice. You know, he used to be married to a much older woman for years when really? he first, yes. When he first started out, I, I should have Googled this beforehand, but she was, I mean, she was considerably older, like, I don't know, 25, 20, 25 years older than him. Really? And then he got to, uh-huh. And oh, then, I never knew that. Yeah. And so then he, eventually they parted ways, but you know, my point being that he, he can appreciate an older woman. And the, um, one of the comments was from our friend that has been on the show before Amanda Napolitano of the Donna foundation. And she showed us a picture of her with him and said, he is a, a big health advocate, which we also just learned because he has said that even though this seems to have been a long time coming, the timing couldn't be any better because he has a health platform that, oh, wow. uh, charity and his, I think it's his mother that had breast cancer. Oh, wow. So I have, he's checking all of my boxes. Yeah, he's checking, and, he, and he looks amazing with gray hair. Yes. I mean, amazing. Yes. So isn't that the way it always is? Like Richard Gere, all the older men, Harrison Ford, anyone, they look better with yes. gray hair. He looks phenomenal. And, and, uh, I'm just, I'm just surprised to see everybody agreeing on something. You know, you can't, you can't ever find Something for everyone to agree on on social media. And yet somehow this seems to be the one. Yeah, everyone loved it. Yeah. So that made me really, really happy. Uh, another story that I saw in social media this week was that the duck face is no longer the trending way to pose for a selfie. And we're all familiar now with the duck face. That's the, you know, putting your lips together mm, for these photos. I never thought it was particularly flattering. I didn't either. Now it's the scrunch face, which baffles me why anyone would want to create more lines in their face. Well, when is this I'm from 20 do- somethings? It is. Or 30 year olds who it is. don't it have me, that many lines? 
it makes me want to say, stop it. You'll stick that right. way. Well, it's something your mother always said. If you keep doing that, it's going to last. So, so yeah. the scrunch face, the only redeeming quality I could see about it is if we tried it, we could pretend like all those lines are actually from actually trying to do a scrunch face. But I think I've got enough Botox going that I couldn't pull it off anyway. I think I would try to do the but scrunch face. But when you face. scrunch, all the lines around your eyes are it. At, you know it's what I mean? Pleasant. It's not a good look for anybody. I, I mean, and it's a newsflash for you 20 somethings, none of which are listening right now. Right. <laughs> it's not a good look for you guys. Yeah. No, especially when you're youthful, just have a pretty smile. Just you don't have need a to have a, a TikTok thing that, you know, just be you and smile and enjoy, enjoy your youth. I like a good candid laugh. I do too. Catch me in the middle of a laugh. Yes. That's the only time when I look at a picture and I'm like, that's a good picture. I took some pictures with some friends. We got together, some high school friends this past weekend. And there, we took a few pictures together. And in one of them, my husband was taking the picture. He said something funny and we all started laughing. And that's my favorite. Nobody's looking at the camera. We're all kind of looking at each other. But everybody's smirking and smiling and laughing and It looks natural. And those to me are the best ones. That's frameable, in my opinion. You came back from a a, a lovely vacation. (laughs) Yes, I did. A very lovely vacation. Well needed. 35 years together, our anniversary and my husband's 60th. So we combined them since they're a week apart. And um, it was amazing. It was relaxing, but, you know, good to be home. It's always good to be home. And you tried something that you heard about here on our podcast when we had a travel expert on, and that is putting an air tag in your luggage. In your luggage. Now, my favorite part is Mitch, your husband's reaction to this. (laughs) Oh, he loved it. He was hilarious. We put, we, on Amazon, you can get four. So we put them in every suitcase on everything. And it was like a little boy with a new toy. He kept saying, oh my gosh, look, it's on the conveyor belt. Oh no, they lost your luggage in Yellowstone Park. I'm like, we're nowhere near that. How is it it, uh, over there? I'm like, stop telling me like you're stressing me out. And so the whole entire vacation, he, when we were up and back, he'd say up here, it's coming. They just took it off the plane. It's like a little video game for a grown adult. But I have to say, what a genius idea. And because you lose your keys all the time, these are perfect because you put them in a keychain. Like you they're dots. Yes. I don't know. This is all new to me. But anyway, I now have one on my purse. So that way if something is stolen, at least you know who has it or where it's at. So you can kind of do something about it. So it, it's it's a new toy for a guy. For me, I just thought if they lose my luggage, it, what am I going to do anyway? I've already told my family, stocking stuffer for me, air tags. And, Perfect. And it's funny that you would say lose your keys because this past weekend, also, I misplaced my keys. And I was pretty sure I remembered sticking them in a pocket. Now, I have keyless entry, remote keys, like, Right. Most cars these right. days do. You just have to have the key in the vicinity. And I'd get in my car and it would say no key detected. So I thought first I decided I told well, first I told my husband, I said, please be careful doing laundry. I almost am positive that I have put them in a pocket somewhere. And so he said, Well, you better get the laundry out and start going through it. I said, Oh no, I will not. I took the entire hamper and I got in my car and the car still when it started. I saved oh, so myself you know, yeah. from having to go through all of those pockets. I just put my whole hamper in the car and I'm like, okay, if my whole hamper isn't making the car start, I'm not gonna bother with right. that. And so I went back in my closet, I found it in my coat pocket oh. that was hanging up. See if you had an air tag, all you do is it would beep, pop beep, up beep, right beep, on beep, your beep, phone. Like a metal detector. Yes, it is hilarious. So although technology frustrates me. I think this is a really good thing, whether it's luggage or purse or keys, whatever it is. I think, um, yeah, I think it's a great stocking stuffer. It is. So, um, tell us a little bit though, you know, you had this lovely vacation, you came back and, and, and you feel rested and relaxed. No, and- well, we had severe jet lag. I will have to you say, okay. yeah, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not so easy to travel no. time zones, is it? No. And not only did we have the 
you know, time change, but then we had the, the daylight savings time or whatever it is when you fall back. So I, by the end of the day, I was like, I don't know what time it is anywhere. It, you know, cause the time had changed again. So yeah, the older you get, the harder it is to just bounce back when you are on a different time zone for a long period of time. Cause right when you get used to it, it's time to leave. I don't know. I've it, been saving this question up for you because I just know how much you like to go to bed early. When it gets dark at 5.30 in the afternoon, as it does now, I'm what in time heaven. are you? I, you are? I am uh, in heaven. I love this time change so much. You I do? can't even tell you because I'm a morning person, so it's light in the morning. So I love that. And I'm a go to bed early person anyway. So this is my favorite when it changes back in the spring, it just messes me up totally. I mean, it's so pitch black in the morning, even at seven. I mean, it's, I know you're a runner, so you probably like it being lighter. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. And it's, you know, when you're like, my daughter is now a runner and she's like, yeah, I'm going to run. And it was pitch black. And I'm like, you're not running in the, Mm -hmm. in the dark. That's crazy. So it's harder if you're athletic, unlike me. (laughs) It's hard for me to just want to stay awake. I got home yesterday from being out of town and I started to get snoozy at about six o'clock. I was like, what the heck? Why do I feel like it's 10 PM? It's been a full week since we set the clocks forward or backwards, backwards, backwards. So yeah, it's unbelievable. I think they should definitely stop this though. It should be one way or the other, because right when I get used to this way and I'm loving it, they switch it back to the other way. So I, I know they've been threatening to pass a law or whatever for years and years. You read about it every year around this time. I just wish they'd figure it out one way or the other. Because well, you when know? I first got married, Indiana, where my in-laws live, and I know my mother-in-law listens to the podcast, so she'll appreciate oh. this. So she, uh, she would call half the year and it's not her fault. How are you going to remember half the year we were on the same time and half the year we weren't. And I go to bed so early. So I would miss, you know, right. miss the call because you just, I mean, it's one thing if you're going to do it, but it's quite another if some States aren't right. and at that time, they were not. So it was like his whole family was on a different time, it's, time, half the year, but not the whole year. Uh, it was that's really so wild. confusing. It was I, yeah. Extremely confusing. Speaking of my mother-in-law, She has analyzed the Golden Bachelor based on horoscopes for all of us. Which I loved that when you read that to me. I'm really big into the horoscope thing. She has it down to where she's got, which one, I I don't want to get too in depth in it, in her philosophy, because one of the people she talked about isn't there anymore. But, But she really believes, and spoiler alert, if you are not caught up, But she really believed that the real connection that Jerry, the Golden Bachelor, has is with Teresa, who you and I do not care for. I just don't even get it. I'm going to just say it. I know we're not. Are we into it yet? Yes, uh, let's get into it. Because I do not understand it. I, I guess maybe it'll unfold at some point and I'll see. But this man, I'm going to finally say it, I think is a bit of a cad. Okay, oh, good old fashioned word. Yeah, I, I'm going to say him telling two women he loved him, but not her. But my mother-in-law thinks, Sharon thinks that's because he's in love with Leslie. I'm sorry, Teresa, but only loves the yeah, but he, he, Yeah, but that's, he, I, you don't tell a woman you're in love with them. And then yeah, I, although I even wrote this down. This is why you don't go on The Bachelor, whether you're young or old, because it's all a bunch of BS when you get down to the hometowns. And like Faith, as we all saw in The Women Tell All and you saw at the end, I mean, she was devastated. Yes. I mean, she was in love with him. And I mean, it put a tear in my eye. I felt bad for her. She couldn't believe it. I think she really genuinely had that young girl mentality, like, oh, he told me he loved me. And really, he's the golden bachelor and he's saying and doing whatever he wants because there's all these women fawning all over him. Do you remember something I said last week where I said he said the same thing to a couple of the women and it 
to me, spoke vo- volumes about him when he said what he liked the most about them was about how they looked at him. Yep. Well, he said it again. Yep. He said it about Faith. He said, she looked at me. I I hadn't been looked at that way since my wife. So he cares an awful lot about how people are looking at him. If they're looking at him with love, it makes him like them more. So he really wants that admiration now. I don't want to pile on Jerry because I have to say that I he did not, I don't want to say he won me over a little bit more during the women tell all, but I feel like he was much more in his element and kind of suave. And that didn't match with the original way they wanted us to see him at yeah. all. So I feel like I kind of knew him better there because he, he clearly is a guy who can hold a room. Yes. He's not the bumbling, nervous no. Nelly that they made him out to be at the very beginning. He loves the attention. He's loving He it. loves the attention from the audience. He was like, Loving that, loves the attention from the women, loves the attention as the Golden Bachelor in general that he's getting from, you know, outside places. I I just feel as a woman, what I've seen, especially in the Women Tell All episode, I just think I still am going with the same vibe. It just makes older women look like a used car. Almost like you've had your time. Yes. Now move on. And Let can, the young people, yes. like Joan said, like Joan, I wrote down a bunch of things she said, okay. which I do still believe. I liked Joan. I still in my heart of hearts, I I still think there there's a chance because I know that he says this all the time, Jesse Palmer. It, this is going to be an ending like you will not believe, although they say that with every bachelor. I bet they do. But I think- that somehow one of those women is going to come back or something's going to happen. If one that's comes gonna... back, it has to be Joan. Right. But I don't think the shock could be him picking Teresa. I mean, duh. I mean, that's not shocking if he picks her now no, at this not point. not if she's one of the finalists. I definitely will. I don't think it's Leslie. I think now where we are, I think it's going to be Teresa if he picks her or if he doesn't even pick anyone. And that's the shock. So there was a TikTok that was um, going around and it was making all of the headlines, too. Did this TikTok from Leslie give away the ending to The Golden Bachelor? And in the background, you can hear a man's voice and it sounds like Gary. Let me tell you, they have such a tight control over everything. If there's a TikTok out there that makes it sound like Leslie is hanging out with Gary after the fact, that is by design to throw us off. Yes, I think so too. Everything is scripted. This everything is, is not everything's controlled. Everything's controlled. There are no mistakes in this. Um, one thing I'm going to say that I was laughing so hard is bu- the bunk beds. These are <laughs> old, older women and they're they're putting them in bunk beds and like Sandra's <laughs> like, I can't go in a bunk bed. I've had knee replacement. The weird things that took place for was, the golden bachelor, I find bizarre. Like, why are you making a 60 or 70 year old woman go up on a top bunk? I, I, I don't, I don't know. I think that they, I think they could have chosen way different ways to to do this golden bachelor. They made it a little cheesy with the Ferris wheels constantly. Even in hometowns, they went to another park to do the Ferris wheel. I'm like, what is going They're on? They're trying to here? kill these women. I think so too. So what what do you make um of Natasha, I loved her and I did not realize because I love that she squeezed in her her handle on TikTok and Instagram. She is a midlife coach. So don't you know, I reached directly out to Natasha. Oh, really? The midlife yes. maven. Yes. And I mean, I love that she got that in there because they yes. never mentioned that during the whole no, season. No, they and didn't. She's on the thing. She's like, well, as a mid, as a, as a coach of older women, the midlife maven hashtag. Right. right. You know, so I'm like, she oh, was good. I'm like, so I mean, I'll never hear back from her, but I just okay. thought she was fantastic. So what is your thought about all the gas Oh, going the whole on. talk about gas. I mean, I I thought it was so weird. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. I just thought if if this is what they have left to talk about for the Golden Bachelor, women tell all. I mean, come on. How they weren't sure whose cooking gave them all gas. Right. And Sandra. Yeah. And and when she 
I mean, I was like, this is, we a, don't need to talk about yeah. your bowel movements. We don't need to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was weird. So that I definitely, Oh, but you were about to tell us about Joan. You wrote some things down specifically okay. about Joan. Um, when she said, once you're a mom, you're always a mom, even when your kids are older, I had to write that down because I so, so, so love that she brought up that her daughter suffered from postpartum depression. It just gives it a platform for mm-hmm. all women who suffer from postpartum depression. And you have to rely on people when you're suffering like that. And who better to rely on than your mother? And your mom can't ignore that because she's on the Golden Bachelor. You know what I mean? Unlike Sandra, whose daughter got married and she skipped it. Yeah, right. And also, they I read something where they she wanted to come back and they originally were going to have her back. And then something where they, I think too much time. Oh, what they said was then her daughter, she thought was getting better and then had a setback. Oh no. So yeah. Okay. So anyway, when Kris Jenner, who I don't think Susan looks like Kris Jenner. I think it's only a haircut. Yeah. I thought it was a haircut. I mean, I've been calling her China, the wrestler. I mean, that's who I thought she looked like. She's beautiful. Stunning. But I thought that was weird that Kris Jenner like came on to do a little, you know, it was blurb. weird. And then for her to be like, I love her. I don't see her as somebody who's a big Kardashian fan. No, no, not at all. And then as you get older, you become more invisible, not as significant as when you were young. We have That's talked about, yeah. Well, we have talked about that all the time. Again and again. And so for her to mention that, it, I think it just tells you where the over 50 crowd starts to feel alone. I mean, unless you create your own community, you get out in the community, you have lots of friends because you start to feel, oh, I go to the grocery store and no one even says, you know what I mean? And so for her to bring that up, and then I think Gary brought that up again at the end of the Women Tells All, tells you how lonely a lot of people are over 50 as they get older, feel they're invisible and they're confirming that. I, I, I want to really say that that word, when we first, in one of our very first episodes, mm-hmm. talked about that, I felt affirmed immediately. It's so real. It's I, so I real. I just don't think people know, especially when you have a dynamic personality. Christine has a dynamic <laughs> personality. I know that I am, an, you know, come off as an extrovert and I, you know, doing, out there doing, being, seen. You just don't know. It's so real. The the difference in how you are treated, talked to, looked at once you are over 50 and yep. actually look over 50, yep. it's real. It's real. It's real. I mean, I don't even have eloquent words to, to use. Yeah, to I say totally it. agree. It's upsetting when I think about yeah. how unbelievable it is. And I think I've been guilty on the other side of it when I was yeah, younger. Yeah. When you're, when you're younger, it's like, sure. Oh, look at that old lady or, or, or you know, yeah, or, or just, discounting what yeah, someone just, says. yeah. I'm, I mean, I just, think they're trying to shift this narrative now that 55, 60, 65, 70, 75 is not old anymore. It's just really coming along slowly. I think they've done many things right on the Golden Bachelor and many, many things wrong. Yes. They've made a mockery of some things. And then in other cases, they keep saying, oh, this is to show everybody that there's still hope, there's still love, that we still have life left in us. And, And yes, that's that's accurate. And you are showing that, but you almost take a step back every time you have to focus in on like what food gives you gas. Right. And, and I can't move I have today. A knee replacement. I, I'm right. Yeah, exactly. Well, Ellen said he made her feel special. He was attentive, caring, and loving. And I think that was the whole theme. In my opinion, you heard Every woman say that he was so attentive. He would look in my eyes. He made me feel like I was the only girl in the room. I mean, you know, you're on the golden bachelor. You're vying for his attention. I think Gary has charisma. I think he can make a woman feel like she is the only woman in the room. But I just think it's not realistic. Well, how are you going to have a realistic conversation with a camera? Look, you and I are talking right now. There is a camera right. three feet from us, <laughs> raving at it right now. There's a camera three feet from us. So you're telling me that we're going to have, we're going to, I get that after a while you forget it's there right. because we probably both have. Right. But you're telling me knowing that there's 
10 or 12 other women back at the mansion who are also doing the same thing. You and I are going to have this conversation and fall deeply in love with each other. Oh, what about the fact that they are going to do the fantasy suites? Have you seen that? Oh, first of all, I, I, I don't even know what to say about that only because he's like knocking boots. We're going to knock boots. I'm like, uh, you know, I just <laughs> listen. I just think that as you get older, you are supposed to get more mature. Okay. You're supposed to have experience behind you. You're supposed to learn things. I don't want, I think that they could have done, done this without, I don't think it's going to be something that anybody really wants to see. And I think they'll be closing the door a lot and giving you kind of innuendos of what they're doing. Yeah, whether they really do or don't they're yeah. going to make it seem like they did, but it may not be as obvious. Yeah. As and, and I think that's what will start to turn people off a little bit if they're not already. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? The fantasy suites are going to be a little bit of a, uh, too much info for me. Predictions. Okay. Okay. Well, now that faith is out, although I never really, the minute she opened her mouth and said that she loves her horses and it didn't yeah, she's not I didn't think he would keep her anyway. They because don't have enough in common. They, and I don't think she wanted to move and he's not moving to where she is. So my prediction, and I'm still going back, I don't think it's going to be either one of these women. I think it's going to be someone that comes back from that group and my prediction is still Joan. I agree. I just don't think it's going to be either. And if he does pick Teresa, I just think they'll go off in oblivion. I don't, I think she's very bland. I think she's very, um, somebody that, you know, you're not going to go oh, remember Teresa from the golden. I just don't think she has that kind of what past women mm-hmm. have on those. So we'll see, but I definitely think that this is a one season thing. I'm going to, I say this every time mm-hmm. we talk now, there is talk of the golden bachelorette and they were saying, Oh, Teresa may be it. If she doesn't win, I mean that I'm definitely not watching. I think that there's money here to be made. I do. I feel like if there's money to be made, they'll bring it back. If there's no money to be made, they right. won't. Joan, they're also talking about is the next golden bachelorette. That I could see. I might be here for that. I would watch that, but that's what they need. Someone who will bring a draw. And I just don't think it's Teresa. All right. Well, we shall find out. I was never expecting to be this caught up in it. Oh yeah. I had no idea. I thought, and I still maintain, and I, I feel like I, it's punishment sometimes when I'm watching it, but Now I'm appreciating that it's campy and it's it's all in good fun and I can't wait to find out. So there's, there's more to talk about there. It's almost going to be wrapped up by the time the month is over. Right. It will be over. We'll have um, our first December episode. We'll have the wrap up for you. In the meantime, we recognize that uh, a lot of what we talk about, we, we count on you and our uncluttered and unfiltered ladies only group. So please do join that. If you have not already, it's very easy to find us on Facebook. It's just uncluttered and unfiltered ladies only. And then you ask to join and we approve you and let you in. We're also on every other social media. We have a YouTube channel and, uh, until the next time, remember you can let it go and don't look back.